Hello guys and welcome back to the Stacey West YouTube channel. I am Ben and I'm joined by Tyler Rowlandson from, well, his own YouTube channel, uh, Tyler Rowlandson <laughs> on YouTube, uh, looking ahead to Charlton Athletics visit to the bank on Tuesday night. And uh, obviously, you know, could be a bit of a spicy one for, for one particular apple-shaped reason. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get straight into it. How are you doing, mate? Are you, are you keeping well? Yeah, yeah, I'm all good, mate. I'm just uh, looking forward to the game Tuesday, especially with the form we're on. Uh, hopefully we can keep that going. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, taking Reading apart on, on Saturday, it's, yep. uh, you know, uh, that looked like a really impressive result, especially with everything coming in the second half. Yeah. Um, was that first 45 just dull and then all of a sudden it kicked into life or was there promise all the way through? It was exactly that. It was just a flat first 45. And to be fair, I actually thought Reading had the better opportunities in that first half. It's, um, it's a growing thing with us this season. I think we've just accepted that we are just a second half team. It's been the story of our season, really. We've just not really been able to create enough chances or get on the end of the chances that we create in the first half. And then when Appleton gets into the gets the team into the um, change rooms and uh, at half time, he just gives them a grilling, I suppose, or he just says something and something just clicks and we just come out fighting in the second half. But... Yeah, I, I, as I said, I felt Reading actually had the better opportunities in that game on Saturday in the first half. They tested our keeper a lot more than we could and then mm. something just clicked in the second half and after we got the goal, I had the confidence that we were just going to go on and win the game and we just completely bossed it from then on, dominated, scored some really good goals, played some good football and yeah, I mean, that's just, just the story of us at the moment. Appleton's just getting us going. We're still unbeaten under his reign. I think it's six unbeaten under him now, seven in the league, eight in all competitions, I believe. So we are in very good, uh, very good form. And as you said, it's going to be a spicy, uh, spicy encounter on Tuesday. We've been making his return to uh, to you guys. Yeah, well, I mean, he was a he was a divisive figure, shall yeah. we say, among amongst the fan base. Um, but obviously, he's turned things around for you guys after you know after Dean Holden's left. What went wrong with Holden, and what has Appleton changed um, in the setup, or just how you guys are playing? <sighs> It's a, a culmination of different things. I remember back to remember back to Holden um, during that time. I remember when we sacked him. It was a, I thought it was a very premature decision considering he had a lot of things against him. I think the players just weren't really performing. But th that being said, with what Appleton's done now, I think tactically Holden was a bit inept. His substitutions were a bit questionable as well, if he made any at all. Um, whereas Appleton, he's come in and he's been able to install his own system. He's uh, adopted, I think, now a four-two-three-one and stuck mm -hmm. with it. And it's worked a treat so far. We've, we're now fighting for the ball. We now look like we want the ball and want to compete in games. And when we are ahead, it's, it's not usually like a Charlton side, but we look to score more goals and we look to punish teams. And that's what we did against Reading and what we did against Exeter a few weeks ago. So I think under Holden, we were just really just inept and just didn't look good. Pretty much the story of our lives the last couple of seasons in League One. But Appleton, for whatever reason, has just got us clicking. Is it a new manager bounce? It could very well be, but... He's keeping the form going. We're, the team is, as I said, performing. We're fighting and we're looking very good at the moment. And four points off the playoffs, I think, you know, is uh, is kudos to that as to what he's doing with us. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, let's let's talk about that because you said you said there are four points off the playoffs. We're obviously can't, we're obviously on the same amount of points. Yep. I think there's probably a a big disparity between attitudes among the fans of both cl uh, both clubs, though. I'd probably say at the minute. We've we've probably had a bit of a, a downturn emotionally <laughs> over the past <laughs> few weeks. Obviously, you know, last week being uh, being a bit of a culmination of that with uh, with Mark Kennedy sacking. Yeah. Um. But pre-season, were you relatively confident going in, thinking playoffs at minimum, and you know we can potentially strive for a, a top two finish, or was it another one of maybe we can you know have a another season of consolidation before launching a challenge next year? I think the expectation was really high for us going into the season. I think not just amongst the fan base, but I think in general as well for the league. I think the bookies had us quite high as a challenge for promotion. You can only read so much into pre-season because we were playing the vast majority of it against non-league sides. We played, I think, Leighton Orient in pre-season. Our biggest test probably was uh, Millwall, which was a very good, very good uh, test and a good um, 
display of what we could do. We drew that 2-2, but then we played Aberdeen the week before the season and got smashed. So you can only read uh, <laughs> so much into that. But um, as I said, the expectation was really high. I think that really come off the... Um, that, I think that really come from the gem, uh, the summer transfer window, where we had probably one of the best um, one of the best windows I think I've seen in a very long time. We signed some really proven League One players, the likes of Alfie May, uh, Panush Kamara on loan, uh, even Ty Eden, former Lincoln player, of course, uh, mm-hmm. a few other players in there as well. Um, Harry Eisted, who was in hot form as well, coming in from Barnsley, Lloyd Jones from Cambridge. We just signed some really good players, and obviously it took a little bit of a dip uh, towards the end after Holden got sacked, and then we just kind of. On deadline they just went with quantity over quality and we just made sure we got that depth in the team but as i said i think the expectation was really high i expected us to get top six uh going into the season i thought that was a minimum target considering we'd recently been taken over and our club's stature we should really be fighting for that and at the start of the season under holden it looked like we were nowhere near that and looked like we were going to fall back into the mid-table mediocrity that we were for the past few seasons but appleton's got us fighting again so i think that expectation is very much real again I don't see why we can't reach that top six at the moment, especially with the form that we're on and the way that we're playing. So it's it's uh it's been a good turnaround. Let's put it that way from the start of the season. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you mentioned that you you sort of settling on a four two three one at the minute. Yeah. Um, looking back over a few games, it seems like they've you've, you've had games where you played four four two, you've had four three three, and you, you're kind of settling on that four two three one. Yeah. Is that kind of showing the uh, bit of tactical flexibility that you've got um, in the side? Or is it is it something that tends to, you know, you start the game, that's it, that's plan A, and it doesn't really alter from there? Or, do, do, you know, is, is Appleton switching things up throughout the game to, to try and impact it? I think it's down to the overall depth of the squad that allows us to do that and the different mm-hmm. uh, players we have. We normally, I mean, we, we normally stick to 4-2-3-1, and I think that's a, it's a formation we usually run with throughout the whole game. As I said, with the options that we have, we usually do, where we're able to do like for like swaps. There are times where he does shift to two up front or four three three or goes all out attack with three strikers on the pitch at one time. And I think that's where, as I said, our depth comes in nicely where we have the flexibility to do that. But as I said, I think Holden he's really stamped his authority with the four two three one and at the moment it's working a treat. So um but I think I think there is I think there is some some flexibility there for sure, mainly because of the depth. But I think Appleton knows the players that he has at his disposal and he can get the best out of them in different ways. Okay, um, you know you've mentioned him previously. He's obviously a, a player that we were very we were very fond of while he was here. Um, Tay Wedden coming in, yeah. How has how has he settled in? I know he's not played a huge amount of games for you guys so far, um, but have you been impressed with him? And and you know is he is he a player that would fit into what you're doing there at the minute? Yeah, definitely. Uh, he, he started really strong, um, really strong uh, uh, under Holden when. Um, uh, there was a lot of ambiguity coming into him for the season because obviously when he went to Blackburn, he really struggled with injury. Mm-hmm. Um, but we knew from his time with you guys that he was a very impressive player on the left-hand side. He could play a left-back or even further up if he wanted to. But yeah, I was really impressed with him. Um, he kind of tailed off a little bit um, a few games into Holt Appleton's first games in charge. Defensively, he looked a little bit weak. But I think all in all, it was quite a positive start. start. And unfortunately, he's currently injured. That's the reason why he's not been in the squad. That's why he's not. Uh, that's why he's out of the team at the moment. But mm. I think all in all, it's been a very positive start. I think he's settled in well. Obviously, back to somewhat local surroundings. Obviously, coming through the Fulham Academy, I think it was. Um, but yeah, I've been really impressed with him so far, and I think he's definitely someone that would um, that would fit in really well to what we want to do. A fullback that is that's pacey, can overlap with the wingers and put balls into the box and attack as well, and also come back and do a, a solid defensive job. So yeah, I've been been really impressed with him so far. Good, yeah. I mean, he he came to us and he was, um, I think, essentially a, a defensive midfielder, and then he switched over to a left back, and yeah, absolute revelation. Um, yeah, he's he's a player that uh, holds a lot of stock in uh, you know in the fans at Lincoln. So yeah, good to see him uh, progressing quite well. Um, let's talk about your attacking options then, because you mentioned there are many of them um, <laughs> available to you guys at the moment. Um, I mean, Corey Blackett Taylor just seems to be on fire at the minute. You know. Alfie May's banging them in for fun. Um, I did potentially see that Chuck Sneake may be injured for Tuesday. Yeah. Is that just us crossing our fingers and hoping, or is that what's uh, what's happening? Yes, sadly, he definitely will be. Um, Chuck's has been, he's, he's struggled massively with injuries throughout his career, and um, with us especially. Uh, got his first goal of the season on Saturday, which was a big um, big weight off his shoulders. He, he's been desperate to get a goal and finally got one. And then a few minutes later, pulled up with, uh, with a hamstring injury, and it, it doesn't look good either. So I'd, I'd say he's definitely not going to be available for Tuesday, which is great for you. But I think at the same time, we have got um, 
I like for like swapping Miles Lieburn, who was excellent last season for us and has been brilliant again this season. Just such a towering presence. He's, I think he's looked a lot. He looks a lot stronger from what he was last season. So I think he's going to be a big um, menace. And then, uh, as you said, Corey Blackett Taylor is finally finding some end products and some um, some unbelievable football. He's been fantastic this season for us. And then Alfie May, who's been played in a various various roles for us so far this season. Holden played him uh, as the lone striker, and we sort of just punted balls long to him and just sort of hoped and prayed he could get on the end of it. Whereas for uh, for Appleton, he's actually played him as a 10, which is quite interesting in behind the striker. But I think he's flourished in that role because he's someone who can press. He's someone who works so hard off the ball and he gets in the right place at the right time to score goals. He's got eight and 11 for us now. So we have got some very good attacking firepower, as you'll be unfortunate and to hear for that. Yeah. But yeah, we've <laughs> yeah, got good options. <laughs> yeah. Um, and of course, you know, uh, I think uh, by all accounts, Tyrese Campbell coming off the bench, yes, um, at the weekend and and getting a goal and an assist, and I think some people suggested he would have been uh, their man of the match. So um, it's it's not like you know your first eleven is is your final eleven as no. was sometimes the case with Appleton under Lincoln. Uh, sorry, with Lincoln under Appleton, I should say. Um, we we did find sometimes that he would he'd refuse to make substitutions. Um, until you know, very late on in the game, and I, I suspect a lot of that is going to be to do with squad depth. Because, like you say, yeah, you know, looking down your squad list at the minute is it, it's a bit of an embarrassment of riches, isn't it? <laughs> um, so uh, okay, right. Well, you know, you're um, you haven't won at Central Bank in the uh, in the times that we've been playing you in this in the league. It yeah. sounds, it does sound like that is under threat. On on Tuesday night, <laughs> um, you know what, what's how confident are you in in the uh, in the squad's ability to to get a result on Tuesday? And is, have you seen anything of Lincoln so far that you know makes you think mm, maybe we you know we can probably turn him over or we can probably do quite well on Tuesday night? I think it will be a tough test uh, for sure. As you said, we're both equal on points. Obviously, you're on a little bit of as you said a little bit of a downturn, whereas we're sort of on the rise. But it's it's going to be no no easy game for sure. I mean, for starters, we haven't actually won away so far this season, which might actually be quite oh, wow. uh, interesting to say we haven't won away from home at all yet. Um, I might have that wrong. I'm not sure, but I'm fairly certain we haven't. Um, but I know I know I know the threats you could cause. I'm I'm a big fan of some of your players. Danny Mandroyo, I think, is fantastic. Ethan uh, Ahahan as well. I think they say say his name. Ahahan. Yeah, he's he's brilliant as well. Fantastic player. Uh, you have got a former Charlton player as well, uh, Rico Hackett Fairchild. I was interested to see how he he'd do with you this season. He's done. I, I I rated him for Charlton. He never really got games for us, and he ended up in non-league, and then went back to Portsmouth and did fairly okay there. So I'm interested to see. If he plays uh, on Tuesday, how he'll how he'll fare? But yeah, he'll be sadly. I don't think he will be. He picked up um, similar to what you said about Trucks. He, he pulled up on Saturday with a oh, what looks like a hamstring injury. So um, I would be extremely surprised to see uh, Rico playing on Tuesday night. But also, you're going to not be able to see Danny Mandroyo either, as he's currently suspended. <laughs> um, so, but well, that gives yeah. me a bit more confidence. Then. <laughs> yeah, to give you an idea of our attacking situation at the moment, we we don't really have much of one. Um, and if you're paying attention on the, you know, on the Stacey West YouTube channel to that, that is about 12 minutes in for the uh, we have no strikers klaxon. So, um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, so yeah, Caraman, it, it, it's um, it's always interesting to hear, you know, how you guys or how opposition fans view the imps at the minute. So. But yeah, no, I, I think I, like, like I say, it's going to be no no easy game. I think it will be it will be a very tough test. As I said, we haven't well, we haven't won at Central Bank in the last few years, and we haven't won away from home at all. So that's already going to be a problem. And uh, our actual record in terms of our beat and run at the moment is win, draw, win, draw, win, draw, win. So this has got a draw written all over it. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's going to be it's going to be difficult for sure. You know, it's not going to be. I mean, no, there's no easy game in League One, even though we made Reading fairly easy in the second half. But um, yeah, I, I think I think in terms of confidence of the of this side, I don't think. I've been this confident in a Charlton side since we got promoted back in 2019. It's just the fact that Appleton's got us fighting. And I know that if we have a poor first half, I have the assurance so far anyway that in the second half, we're going to come out guns blazing. We're going to fight. We're going to look to get hold of the ball and press and score goals. And then even when we score, we're not going to take our foot off the gas. So uh, the confidence is there for sure. And I think many Charlton fans will say the same as me. But like I said, I think Lincoln's going to be a difficult, uh, a difficult test, especially with Appleton coming up against his former team. It's going to be interesting to see how he copes with that and how he copes with the reception, which I'd imagine will be quite frosty amongst some of it. <laughs> yeah, I think a, a mixed reception is probably yeah. uh, probably the way that some people would describe uh, what he's likely to receive on Tuesday. Um, 
But uh, yeah, I mean that's that's more or less it. I did want to sort of say, you know, your new additions are, are any of them really firing and improving things. But you've you mentioned, you know, previously as um, you know some of the, the players that you brought in. You, you did say at the end of the window they started to maybe panic a little bit and bring in more than they needed. Would you say? Um, I, I think it was probably what we. It, 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 I think it was what we needed to be honest. And I think even then we maybe fell short with signing another left back. I think uh, we come away in the window with Eden being our only left back, as a matter of fact. And now he's injured. We've had to play uh, Terrell Thomas in that position, who's to be fair to him done a solid job. He's a, he's a centre half playing left back, but he's played that position a few times and done fairly well. But yeah, I, I think towards the end of the window, I think because we sacked Holden, it, it, it was the sense of panic that you know, oh, who's going to want to come to us without a manager and we're so low down the table. But the strategy stayed the same, and we were able to bring in um, a few additional players. We brought in another striker off the top, off the top of my head. We brought in a, a, a midfielder, a right back, and a centre back. So we got. We got the cover that we needed, bar a left back, which I thought we probably could have. Well, I think we should have got with Eden's um, injury record. But uh, yeah, I think in the end, I think in terms of depth, we come away with what we needed. But I think in terms of quality, there could be some more we could add for sure. Um, going into the back end of the season, especially. But I think in terms of, as I said, in terms of depth, I think we got exactly what we needed, bar a left back. Fair enough. And uh, we will, of course, come to the moment that nobody enjoys doing. But... Um, let's have a prediction from you, Tyler. Let's let's see. You know, do you think Appleton's going to get one over the Imps on Tuesday night, or are we going to be able to, you know, maybe just put that little fork in the road for him? I mean, I am confident, as I said, in this team, but the no away win so far this season has got me slightly worried. And as I said, with the record there, this is bound to be a draw. Um, and I'm going to be quite boring. I think that's exactly what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with one all. I think it's going to be very close, very tight. Um, it could be difficult for us to break your defence down, but yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a tough game. And I think, to be fair, I think many Charlton fans would settle for a draw, but we'd, we'd love a win. But I think against a side like you, who can cause problems when they want to, I think yeah, I think a draw would be well, a draw would be better than nothing for sure. So yeah, I'll go one all with this one. I, I think I'm probably going to have to join you in that one, um, <laughs> primarily because you know it, it looks like we may may potentially have a you know a first team striker available for us on Tuesday night in Jack Vale he was on the bench on Saturday um we haven't seen him yet he he kind of we, we signed him and uh he he went back um we signed him on loan went back played a like a sunday game into like an inter squad game okay. um and uh, got himself injured again so uh <laughs> yeah he's we we haven't yet seen him and obviously Tyler Walker and Ben House are, are long term injured but yeah maybe i, I doubt he'll start but We'll we'll see, um, but yeah, I I think a one-all draw would be a fantastic result for us on yep. Tuesday night. Um, given the situations that we have at the moment, I, I just think it's uh, that's almost the best we could hope for. Um, I know obviously people will be you know probably screaming at me saying, "Oh, you should be hoping for a win." So of course we're hoping for a win, but you know I think it's with everything that's gone on, I think um, you know a one-all draw after a. Um, a slightly unexpected away win is is a decent shout, I think. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, should be good. Um, and finally, uh, anything that you you know want to plug? If you want to let us, you know, floor's yours for thirty seconds or so, mate. Just give us a give yourself a shout out. Yeah, I'll, I'll plug my YouTube channel. Why not? Um, it's Tyler Rowlinson. It's just my name. I've uh, been doing um, Charlton content for I think going on six years. This is my sixth year now. Uh, in December, so I've been going for a long time. Didn't expect to get the following I have done, um, but I do. Um, I do. I, I cover Charlton, obviously, being a Charlton supporter. That's that's fairly obvious. Uh, and also doing loads of other League One content as well. Match reactions. Did a vlog of the Reading game. If you want to check that out, uh, you can check my channel out and watch that. And uh, yeah, looking forward to making more content as the season goes on and building a bigger platform. Great stuff. Well, great to have you back, uh, and Tyler. And uh, hopefully, you know, we'll see you Tuesday night. And best of luck for the rest of the season afterwards. Yeah, and you, and you. Thanks for having me on. Been a been a pleasure. Cheers.